welcome to Accounting Hub. I'm Professor George Scarpi, PhD in Accounting. And today our topic is cost volume profit analysis for multi-product companies. So if you want to know more about the basic of cost volume profit analysis, sensitivity analysis, and so on, we have another video about, about this topic, and the video is in our video description. So here we will move from cost volume profit for one product to more than one product. Okay. What, what is it? It's changing sales mix. So what is sales mix? Combination of products that make up total sales. All less, all else equal. Oh, hard expression. Company earns more operating income by selling a high contribution margin products. And we work with the concept of weight every contribution margin. Weight each contribution margin by the relative numbers of, number of units sold. So let's go to our Excel file. It's much easier to work from there. Uh, and just to and remind you, if you are a regular follower of our channel, you already know that. But if you are a new one, all of our Excel files, they are available for free. And the link to download it is in our video description. And this Excel file, the first two sheets here is about break-even points. So here you have explanations about break-even points and then multiple products in units or sales. So let's work with units. So we have here five products with this, uh, selling prices and variable costs and the contribution margin. Selling price less variable costs. Let's go and paste here. And what is the most important topic of multi-product uh, analysis is the basket. What is the basket? We can do it in a multiple ways. The way that the companies usually do it they cope and paste the actual sales of the previous periods or average of the previous year and so on. Or just like I did it, work with proportion. So when we sell four products, one, we sell two products, two, three products, three, five products, four, and six products, five, for instance. Or if our uh, sales is 10,000 times more than that, Let's do it, for instance, oops, 40,000 units, 80,000 units, 30,000 units, 50,000 units, 60,000 units. We will have the same, the same results. And, but let's work with this one and then we go back to the old numbers. Let me format it here. Oops. Here. Oh man, format here, format here. And we sum our basket. So let's sum it. 200,000 units. The contribution margin, the total contribution margin. Unit contribution margin times number of units in basket. And we copy and paste here. And the sum, we also sum it. And how do we do the weight every contribution margin per unit? Contribution margin dividing by the sum of our basket. 71 per unit. Fixed cost, remember the formula of break-even point. Fixed cost plus operating income here, we want an operating income equals to nothing, divided by contribution margin per unit. A little bit more than 2,900 units. What if we go back to our previous numbers? Four, two, three, five, six. We will have the same break-even point. That is why we can work with all of these methods. So it doesn't matter if we are talking about actual or proportion, our break-even point will be the same. However, okay, 2,800 units, but units of product one, two, three, four, or five. Then we go back to break even sales units per product. We do it based on proportion of the units in the basket. For instance, 4 in 20 
it's uh, 20%. So 20% of this number will be for product one. Two in 20, it's 10%. So 10% of this number will be for you for product two and so on. How do we do that? Equal break even point divided by 20 times four. So 10%, 563. And here we come back here. This one we fix it. This one we fix it. And copy and paste. We will have our numbers. And if we sum them, we will have the same break even, break even point. Okay? But that doesn't make sense in real life company because while this mix here is changeable and it's very hard to create some target uh, for our marketing department and so on. So for multi-product companies, usually what makes more sense is to work with the break-even point in sales or in revenue or in dollars. Let's do it. So we have here the same numbers, the same units in basket. What do we have? Say, and now for units, we need only contribution margin. Here we need sales, variable cost, and contribution margin. So sales, 120 times 4. Let's fix this for only the row. Contribution margin, copy and paste. Or, sorry, variable cost, we copy and paste. Contribution margin, 120. That is the same 120 here, by the way. Now we can copy and paste this formula to all of our products. So 120, 200, 240, 500, 350. 120, 200, 240, 500, and 350. We have the same numbers. Of course, because we are working with the same numbers. And we sum only our money. We don't sum our units anymore. So sum of sales, sum of variable costs, contribution margin, or we can sum our contribution margin. How do we find our break-even point in dollars? Fixed cost divided by contribution margin ratio. So we need to find our contribution margin ratio. That is this yellow cell here. Contribution margin divided by sales. So almost 32%. Fixed cost, 200, break-even point. Fixed cost plus operating income. We have no operating income here. Divided by contribution margin. So a little bit more than $626,000. That is a much better target for our sales department or marketing department. Guys, you need to sell a little bit more than $626,000. Then we will have no loss. And then we will consider that these units in basket will remain same. Okay, guys. So, thank you so much. If you have comments or questions, leave it here or email me at jscarping at gmail.com. Please subscribe our channel, like our video, and have a very nice day.